We're going to have you start with just a quick statement on uh, getting started here in the 2019 NCAA tournament. Thank you. Uh, well, I mean, obviously, it's uh, you know, it's that time of the year when uh, you know every kid playing college basketball and every every coach, you know, hopes that they're in a situation like this, you know, to be playing in the NCAA tournament and. Um, you know, I, I feel like we're um, we're fortunate that you know we we get to not only play but you know host an event and um, um, I, just like every other year, you know you you prepare um, because you know you're playing a good team. You know anybody that makes the NCAA tournament obviously is is a good team and. Try not to look too far ahead and just concentrate on what's right in front of you. Okay. All right, Carl, you're up first. Gino, can you update us on Katie Lou and has a decision or when will a decision be made to whether she plays tomorrow? Well, I mean, she looks she looks good. Uh, um, it'll be three weeks, I think, uh, tomorrow or Saturday. What's tomorrow? Friday. Saturday. It'll be three weeks. Um, so she's looked better every single day that she's been practicing. Um, so if it's, if she's got anything to say about it, she's going to play tomorrow. That's it. Questions? Anyone? Jeff? <clears throat> Gino, uh, Phil Martelli was, was forced out of St. Joe's the other, uh, two days ago. I know it's a lot of hard feelings in Philadelphia. And could you just kind of reflect on that and just kind of address like the perils of being a college coach despite being at a place for so long and so dedicated to it? Um, yeah. Um, you know, when I saw that, um, I was, I was really taken back. I was really shocked by the suddenness of it. Um, I mean, it's bad enough what happened to, to Dumpf, where you know one more year and then you're out. Um, so I, I think the Philadelphia basketball community lost two great coaches and two great ambassadors for the sport. Two people that have done as much for Philadelphia basketball as uh, as as anyone, um, not just on the court but off the court. And you know, like Phil said, you know, this wasn't a job to him until it became a job. This was a way of life. It was it's who he was. It's who his family was. It's it's his identity, he and St. Joe's were one and the same. And, um, you know, for, for that to happen and obviously, you know, I'm not there every day, so I don't know the ins and outs. I just know that in today's day and age, when you get a new AD and you get a new athletic director and you get a new president, things are going to change. Everybody wants to make a, you know, a name for themselves. Everybody wants to put a stamp in their program. Um, you know, you read some of the quotes, you know, and it's always the same. You know, it's like thoughts and prayers to the people who die in horrific massacres. You know, it's we wanted to give our student athletes a better experience. Yeah, it must really suck to have that experience to go to college for free and have somebody that cares about you and loves you and coaches their butt off for you, but you deserve a better experience. That means every coach with a losing record should get fired immediately because their kids are not having a positive experience. I mean, why don't you just say it, you know? We've been, we've been forced to change coaches because we're not winning enough games and the boosters are complaining, period. Give that same old crap. 
You know, you could be Charles Manson, but if your team's winning 35 games every year, nobody gives a goddamn. Question up in front. Coach, this is Towson's first NCAA tournament appearance. Do you remember what your first appearance was like and how special this moment is for a team when they make it? Our first NCAA tournament game was in uh, the old field house. And we were going to play LaSalle. Might have been college at the time. They might not have been LaSalle University at the time. I don't even know. All I know is they were better than we were. So we're going to play LaSalle. And our kids were so excited because we had seven freshmen on the team. And I didn't know what to do to get them ready. I, I, I wasn't going to, like, you know, panic and overdo it and all of a sudden, you know, start coaching like, you know, I was John Wooden or something. So one day we played wiffle ball. Um, you know, I was just trying to get their minds off of that this was a different game than the kind of games that they were playing during the regular season. And, uh, and a lot of our kids knew a lot of the kids on the LaSalle team. And it was a really good game, and the excitement was unbelievable, and the emotions were really high, and it was like the greatest thrill ever to – to be the first team ever in your school in in women's basketball to go to the NCAA tournament. Now that was given where the program was and then to get in the NCAA tournament. And uh, people think, you know, our conference is disrespected this year because we're a number two seed. I think there was only – there may have been only 32 teams in the, in the, in the NCAA tournament or 48. I don't know. There wasn't 64. I know that because we got a buy in the first round, I think. So it might have been 48. So people think our conference is disrespected. I laugh. We won the regular season and the conference tournament in the Big East, and we were an eight seed. <laughs> so um, it was a really good game. And I remember Kerry Bascom got, got hurt a little bit, and we lost. We lost. They were better than us. But here's what's different today than back then. We had a reception over at the Faculty Alumni Center for both teams and the coaches and their parents. <laughs> uh, God bless America. So, yeah, it was uh, – I would say it was pretty memorable. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think if we lose to Towson – Tomorrow, there's going to be reception over at the alumni house. You can be assured of that. There might be a posse forming, but there won't be a reception. <laughs> It'll be a different kind of reception. Anything else for Coach? <clears throat> Gino, you, uh, Vicky Fulkerson from the New London Day, um, you you said how um, when Katie Lou comes back, you that you could be a better team than before. Can you, it, when it when you first found out that she was going to miss the tournament, it was like kind of the, the wind came out of your sails a little bit, and it and you turned it into something positive. Can you address that a little? <clears throat> yeah, you know, we don't necessarily have um, a plethora of scorers on our team. You know, especially people that can make shots the way Lou can. Not many people in the country do. So when you take her out of the lineup and you're taking out, you know, who we use as your backup point guard and your backup power forward, <laughs> whatever we use her as, you, you just don't know how your players are going to respond. So there was a lot of uh, apprehension, I think, going into the, the tournament, playing three days, and we started off a little bit rocky against East Carolina. But we got better every day, and – we did get some great contributions from our young players. And, um, you know, with Lou back in the lineup, I think um, we're better equipped to deal with some things that might happen that maybe we weren't as equipped to deal with before that happened. You know, so I do think we're, in theory, a much better team 
today than we were, you know, when we played Central Florida last week or two weeks ago. Never it was. Anything else? Time for a few more. In the back? Go ahead, Joe. Sure. Yeah. Well, I, it always depends. Um, you know, I, I've always subscribed to the theory that when you're injured, you have no say. You doesn't matter what you think. It's it's up to the medical staff when you play. When you're hurt, it's up to you when you play. So I think Lou Lou had an injury that kept her from playing, plain and simple. And now. You know, she's been kind of given leeway as to, hey, how much do you think you can do and how much are you, you know, willing to to try to do? And Lou said, I want to play. So Lou's going to play. I mean, she might even tell me when she's coming out and when she's not and what plays we're running. I really, I really could care less at this point. It's time for one more if anyone wants it. I'll Okay. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go first. You'll go. No, I just want to know. Continuing with this question. Okay, she might not be 100%. Is she? I don't know what else to do. Maybe in a fish tank. Ah. So many minutes or whatever. Um, you know, you remember, um, if you if you see athletes that have back issues, um, once they start playing, the worst thing you can do is take them out, sit, and then put them back in. So uh, if Lou feels good, she's going to stay in there. Um, if and when I do take Lou out, it's probably she's going to be out for the rest of the game. So we'll see, you know, we'll see how, how it goes. And, um, you know, hopefully um, um, she'll be able to play her normal amount of time. She just spent all year never coming out of the game anyway. So um, I don't think that's going to be any different. And hopefully she'll be able to, you know, hold up. But I'm not going to – first of all, we got to win the game tomorrow. So I'm not going to say, well, we're going to rest Lou for Sunday. I mean, first we got to win the game. And then we'll worry about the next thing. Well, that was my problem with Will. If he had to come out because of the it won't. It won't, unless something serious and unforeseen happens. It won't. It won't. It's not going to get any worse. Let's put it that way. Her injury is not going to get any worse. Real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's never easy. I mean, um, I think the, you know, Vivian spent a lot of time away from, from her team for various reasons, whatever they are, uh, and they probably miss her. That's probably a big difference between me missing and them missing. Um, so, I, you know, I went out, did some recruiting during the time we had off, but we didn't have practice those days, so... I wasn't really missing anything, but to not be able to be at practice, to not be able to coach your team, you know, to not, especially in the NCAA tournament when it's the most important time of the year, that's got to be difficult. And it's got to be difficult on the coaches, the coaching staff that's, you know, taking her place, the players who are used to a certain way, you know. Um, so yeah, it, it it can't be it can't be easy, um, you know. Watching it on TV is not, it's, it's worse. It's worse than sitting on the bench. You have no control on TV. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, actually, it's the same then. You can yell and they don't hear you. <laughs> we have to let you go. Thank you so much for coming up. Thanks, Bill.